Welcome back to our next episode of What's Up Prof. Nice to see you again, Walter. Yes, it hasn't been this long this time. No, it's, uh, we have got a lot to say, so I'll open with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you very much for bringing us together again. We ask that you guide our discussion and let the Holy Spirit open our minds and bless us with all that you do with us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Well, the title is still Conspiracy Theories, with a tiny little question mark behind it. <laughs> this is the third one in this little subsection. Yes. Hopefully the last one in this subsection, then we can get on to other topics, right? Correct. So, we were talking about Revelation chapter 11 and its effect on the times we live in. And we were looking at the double application the then time application of a literal event serving as a type for a greater event at the close of time. Now today we're going to talk about the new normal and I know people have heard about the new normal but we have to again apply our filters and put it into context. Yes. And we last looked at the destruction of the cities and uh, the warning that thousands of cities will be destroyed. So this is a very serious issue. So what is the new normal? And is it an improvement or is it a regression? Now if we look at the overall picture, we know that God is going to destroy the whole world, right? Yes. So we have to look at what the new normal is. So we'll just play a little video just to get people tuned into the idea of what the new normal is. We're going to a different place, which is a new normal. 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 New normal. Embrace the new normal. 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 This new normal is going to look very, very different. Not normal, but a new normal. The new normal. New normal. There will be a new normal. A new normal. New normal. A new normal. The new norm. A new normal. This is the new normal. This is our new normal. Our new normal. A new normal. Our new normal. New normal. The new normal. Our new normal. We will transition into the new normal. This will be the new normal until a vaccine is developed. It's kind of freaky, folks. You know, when you see that sort of stuff, you can see how long they've had this plan in the making. You know, World Economic Forum rolling out their whole plan to restructure the world, the great reset that we need to combat this terrible crisis and the terrible state of police brutality that we find ourselves in. Everything that these people who run the World Economic Forum have done, and now they're offering us their solution, which is to basically lock everybody into a smart prison. The thing that'll get us back is the vaccine. Until we have a vaccine. Zero tolerance. So every time we see a case, we basically pounce on it. A vaccine. A vaccine. A vaccine. A vaccine. To all 7 billion people. Almost every expert agrees a vaccine is the fastest way to get our world back. You know, it's so important to get not just hundreds of millions, but literally billions of those vaccines Legislative amendments that would make vaccinations mandatory for public school students unless they have a medical exemption. The vaccine is the thing that, that will change things. The vaccine. The vaccine. On the issue of the vaccine, which you've said in the past could take a year to 18 months, will we have to wait for a vaccine to hug our family and friends who are outside of our bubble? You know, we'll have to prepare for the next one. That will get attention this time. They're really pushing the second wave. But this is just the beginning, folks. It's not going to go away. I said that months ago, this is not going to go away. They're going to release the lockdown a little bit and then they're going to ramp it up even more. What they want to do, you know, the COVID pass, the pass that everybody needs to have to show they're infection free, all the stuff they want to do. They're trialing it in Africa now. They're calling it a trust pass to make sure you're vaccinated. A vaccination record payment system is what they're talking about. This is the payment system. They want you to be scanned, retinal scanned, facial scanned, biometric scans. And that's how you're going to be paying. 
you won't need cash anymore. You won't even need your smartphone anymore. You will be paying with your face. And of course, you will need a record of vaccination in order to enter the store to begin with. A cashless economy where people make purchases with their faces. A giant network of surveillance cameras with facial recognition helps police monitor citizens. Ready for the new era of Big Brother? This time the super surveillance may be for your own good? Well, this is what they're saying the new normal will be looking like. Now, many are saying conspiracy theories. Mm. They mentioned the World Economic Forum and yes. the webpage of the World Economic Forum. I think we should have a look at that webpage. Definitely, especially following on the one that we did on the Great Reset. Yes. So, is this a conspiracy theory or is this a conspiracy fact? Or just a thought. There are still those that pin their hopes on a Q character who will save the world from this tremendous push in this direction. Is this going to happen or is this not going to happen? And of course those who champion the idea that this whole new world order issue will be set aside and normality and morality will be coming back. They are pinning their hopes on Donald Trump, right? Yes. And uh, this becomes very fascinating. So let's have a look at some of the other issues that we can talk about. Well, firstly, we have to again just see what the Jesuits have to say. Yes. I always like to know what do they have to say? Not conspiracy, this mm -hmm. is their web page, this is their magazine, America, the Jesuit Review. Who goes first? The ethics of distributing a COVID-19 vaccine. I always like to know how these people think. Mm -hmm. Remember their whole ideology is to follow the hierarchy and to have no mind of your own. Correct. Let's read what they say. A persistent anti-vaccination minority in the United States. I wonder whether it is a minority. True. It's, um, when, when do you classify a minority? On, on what basis? Uh, yeah, when is it a minority? So is five million a minority? Well, whatever, if it is a minority, they better come right, right, according to these people. Mm -hmm. So a persistent anti-vaccination minority in the United States, along with many people's unwillingness to adopt simple measures to prevent spreading the virus, underscores the challenges ahead. A vaccine program is concerned with the health of the community. And that should be important for any Christian. Americans often focus on individual health, but vaccines are essential for our health. Can you see how they're moving it in the direction of the collective? Yes, common good. Common good. Oh, they do. For the good of the community. There we have it. Have common it. good theology. Who defines common good? They do. Yes. Of course, particularly in the United States, there will be those who will not want to be vaccinated. Particularly if your theology, of course, is such that you consider this the possible mark of the beast. Yes. With the nanotechnology and all of those things. Just as there are those who refuse to wear face coverings in public and argue for the right to be left alone. But we should remember that public health cannot be solely concerned with the rights of the individual. So your individual rights must be curtailed according to their thinking. Yeah. We can respect free choice, but free choices have consequences. Healthcare does not fall neatly into the spheres of public and private behavior. The COVID-19 outbreak is a reminder to Americans that healthcare cannot be understood completely as a private good. Common good? Yes. There's no such thing as a private good. No. And that in solidarity with others, each of us has a responsibility to work for a 
common purpose. They're clever. They're trying to avoid the word common good, good. so that so it they, doesn't but, seem so obvious. Yeah. This is a public health crisis and we need to understand a potential vaccine as an obligation for oneself and for society. So are they advocating force? Yes. And are they advocating for the vaccine? Yes. Definitely. Both of them. Both of them. Now, it's interesting that those who were trained at Jesuit colleges uh, also have this mindset, right? Yeah. Obviously. But I find it fascinating that they also have this mindset that as far as the protests and disruptions are concerned, they do not definitely want to condemn it because they are the instigators of revolutions and wars and calamities in the world. So let's just look at what happened in this discussion with uh, the master behind the COVID-19 uh, measures. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dr. Fauci, do protests increase the spread of the virus? Uh, I think I can make a general statement. Well, half a million protesters on June 6 alone. Yeah. I'm just asking that number of no. people, does yeah. it increase the spread of the virus? Cra crowding together, particularly when you're not wearing a mask, contributes to the spread of the virus. Should we limit the protesting? I, I'm not sure what you mean should, how do we say limit the protesting? Should government what? limit the protesting? I, I, I don't think that's relevant to well, you just said if it increases the spread of the virus, I'm just asking, should we limit it? Well, I'm, I'm not in a position to determine what the government can do in a forceful way. Well, you make all kinds of recommendations. You, no. you make comments on dating, on baseball, on everything no. you can imagine. I'm just asking, you just said it, yeah. that protests increase the spread. No. I'm just asking you, should we try to limit the protests? No, I think I would leave that to people who have more of an, a, a position to do that. I can tell you... Government stopping people from going to church, Dr. Fauci? Okay. Yeah. But no limit, to pro no limit to protest, but boy, you can't go to church on Sunday. What was the, uh, I don't know how many times I can answer that. I'm not going to opine on limiting anything. I'm just going to tell you. You've opined a on a lot of things, Dr. Fauci. Yeah, but I've never this said This is something that directly anything. impacts the spread of the virus, yeah. and I'm asking your, your, your position on the protest. Yeah, yeah. I'm, well, I'm not going to opine on limiting anything. I'm telling you what it is, the danger. And you can mm -hmm. make your own conclusion about that. You should stay away from crowds, government, no matter where the crowds government stop, are. Government has, uh, government has stopped people from going to work. Actually running their business, they got arrested. You think that's okay? You know, I'm not going to opine on who gets arrested and who does not. I mean, I, I, you get where I'm going. I'm telling you, as a public health official, I say crowds. Do you see the inconsistency, though, Dr. Fauci? There's no inconsistency, Congressman. There's what? No There's no inconsistency. So you're allowed to protest millions of people on one day in crowds, yelling, screaming, but you try to run your business, you get arrested? And if you stood right outside of that same business and protested, you wouldn't get arrested? You don't see an inconsistency there? I don't understand what you're asking me as a public health official to opine on who should get arrested or not. That's not my position. You could ask no, as much as you you've want. You've advocated for certain businesses. You've advocated for certain businesses to be shut down. I'm, I'm just asking you on your position on the protest. And we know the protest actually increased the spread of the virus. You've said that. I said crowds. I didn't say specifically. I didn't say protest do anything. So the protests don't increase the spread of the virus? I didn't say that. You're putting words in my mouth. No, I, I, want, I, would, I just want an answer to the question. Do the protests increase the spread of the virus? I, I don't have any scientific evidence that anything. I can tell you that crowds are known, particularly when you don't have a mask, to increase the acquisition and transmission. No matter so what the So you don't have a position is. on whether the protest increase the spread of the virus or don't increase the spread of the virus? I'm saying that crowds, wherever the crowds are, can give you an increased probability that there's going to be acquisition and transmission. But do you understand Americans' concern? I don't think we have to say anything. Yeah. It's just interesting to see how he treads water. Yeah. <laughs> He Science. doesn't want to admit that the protests could be a problem, no. so he tries to skirt the issue. So we'll leave it at that, and people can make their own conclusions. Correct. I also find it interesting that those out there, we are talking conspiracy theories, right? We're not taking sides. Mm -hmm. We're just talking generally. 
I find it interesting that those who consider Donald Trump as the possible savior out of this forced scenario, uh, well, they're saying that he's got it under control. It's interesting that at the news briefing not so long ago, he was quickly removed because there was a possibility of some danger from a shooter outside. And there are those who are saying that he will go underground because in the past he said that he was going to go underground. So yes. uh, are there moves afoot there? I mean, the conspiracy theorists are having a field day. And he's, of course, against the protests and says he will bring in you know, the federal yeah. government to sort it out. And then you have this other faction. They seem to be in, uh, yeah. playing this double game, right? Rubbing so, up against each other. So let's have a look at what he has to say. Well, the rebate that I'm doing cuts out the middlemen and it reduces costs and the money goes back to the people purchasing the drugs. So I have a lot of enemies out there. This may be the last time you'll see me for a while. A lot of very, very rich enemies, but they are not happy with what I'm doing. But I figure we have one chance to do it and no other president's going to do what I do. No other president would do a favored nations, a rebate, a buy from other nations at much less cost. Nobody. And there are a lot of unhappy people. The S&P 500 and the Dow, Dow Jones, are going to be, I mean, the way they're going, it looks like they're just about going to be topping records, hopefully sure. soon. Excuse me? I don't know. I didn't ask that question. It might not have had anything to do with me. It might have been something else. But uh, it was on the outside of the premises. The wall, the, uh, the as you know, the fencing, especially the new fencing that they put up, is uh, very powerful. Uh, but it was on the outside of the White House, okay? And they'll have a full report. Secret Service, in a little while, will have a full report. Are you rattled by this at all, Mr. President? I don't know. Do I seem rattled? It's uh, unfortunate that this is a uh, world, but the world's always been a dangerous place. It's not something that's unique. Uh, the world has been, you look back over the uh, centuries, the world has been a dangerous place, very dangerous place. and. Uh, it will continue, I guess, for a period of time. Now, if we consider our discussion, King of the North against King of the South, we have two ideologies clashing here. Yes. But we also read that fascinating verse they sit at. It's at the same table. At they sit yep. at the same table. And this is always interesting to me. So, conspiracy theory or no conspiracy theory, what does the Bible say and where is all of this heading? Let us go to that web page from the World Economic Forum and see what they have to say. Now, this is not conspiracy. No. This is their web page. Yes. Where do they want to take humanity? Whether they are successful in mm -hmm. this, whether this is a conjecture or a hope, whether this is going to be a reality, that's not our place here, right? Yeah. This is not conspiracy for all those who want to shout conspiracy. This is a fact. Now, we went through this web page uh, yes, in um, some detail, right? It, you can get lost and continue for a long time on this web page, especially this integrated map yes. that they've got there on the COVID-19. They call it the COVID-19 transformation map. Now, this map is, is very interesting, and there are so many cross links that you can go to. And we looked at them, and they're fascinating. Yes. Now, with my old eyes, I can hardly see what's on the screen there because there's so much information. So would you run us through it? If you get to the integrate, uh, transformation map, this is the first thing you'll see. Right around this whole map, there's different um, headlines. Now, this is unfortunately not going to be integrated now because we're on. This is just a slide. So then, if you go and you press, for instance, you click on there, uh, it opens up a whole map 
of blue lines that links different headlines and then you can go and click on the headline again and see all this. If you go on each one, probably if you are a subscriber to this or then you can get yep. all the information you going. Get more detail. Yeah, yes. so we didn't do that but we can still show you enough. On that map you will see different headlines here as well and what was interesting is this find a vaccine one. If you click that then it shows you the different maps and then they have a description here of it and we're not going to go through all of this I just want to show what was interesting if you just follow a few of these mapping. So this is their, this is their master plan, this yes. is where they're heading. And all of this is, you, you can also see this is not a website or a map that's been thought up overnight. No, this is, there's a lot of detail There's in a lot of a information in here. Of detail. But they also tell you where they get the information, which sometimes it's universities and all sorts of very prominent uh, sources. sources. So then if you go then on that one, we clicked on that one, biotechnology. So it opens it up like this then. And then under biotechnology, there's these settings and just look at these interesting headlines. Gene and genome engineering. Yes. And uh, medical biotechnology. Yes. Environmental biotechnology, agricultural biotechnology, industrial biotechnology. Technology. And then under this one, it opens the map and it goes to global health. And then this one was very interesting human enhancement. Yes, to enhance the human being. Yes. So we'll go to that in a moment, but first I want to go to the gene and genome engineering. And there was also an interesting one here called space. And under the space, there's space conflict. Now I'm going through this rather quickly, but like I said, this can keep you busy for hours. And then under space, there's one artificial intelligence and robotics. Uh -huh. And if you go into that one, then it starts getting interesting. Intelligence augmentation. But there's here again, human enhancement. So it shows it, you... It's on many, many yes. subcategories. So you've got space, space conflict, linked with artificial intelligence and robotics. And then there's also again human enhancement. So they link all these things together. The human enhancement I found particularly fascinating. Exactly. If you look then at the sub menus under human enhancement, you can see there. Enhanced, enhanced longevity. Humanist and autonomy, equity and now, social justice. Can you imagine a term humanness and autonomy? That is an incredible thing. Uh, when are you autonomous as a human when you are an individual, right? Correct. But what if you are subject to the common good? Must your autonomy then be curtailed for the sake of your humanity? Well, what did we read in the Jesuit That's article? That's what the Jesuit said, right? It would have to be curtailed. Yeah. But continue, it gets fascinating. Yeah. Enhanced genes. Enhanced bodies. Yeah. Enhanced minds. So yeah, that is that map. And now I can give it over to you again. And then also interesting to, if you go and do a little bit of research. So is this just on their map? Or is there, is there already is the technology already available? Yeah. Are they working on it? Here's a very interesting article. It's a scientific article. Mm -hmm. It's a publication. It's from the US National Library of Medicine, National Institute of Health. And they talk about nanoparticles and the effect they can have on the human genome in yes. the future. If you uh, think it's a bit small, but the headline there reads non-viral gene transfection nanoparticles. Yes, absolutely. So yeah. it's about nanoparticles. Now let's just enlarge the abstract so we can see what it says. The introduction here says gene therapy, the treatment or prevention of disease by gene transfer. 
is regarded by many as a potential revolution in medicine. The recently concluded Human Genome Project has substantially increased our knowledge of the molecular mechanisms of cancer and other gene-based diseases. In addition, there are genes that have been identified whose function in a living organism currently remain unknown. Those are largely controlling genes. Concurrently, changes in the number of genes were found to be associated with a variety of disorders, some of which have been identified as responsible for the onset of several human diseases. The application of gene therapy in the suppression or replacement of malfunctioning genes promises progress in understanding physiological roles of genes and in treating diseases at the genetic level. The non-viral gene transfer method will permit targeting and analyzing biological effects to specific cell tissues. Ultimately, gene therapy will translate into substantial improvements in therapeutic ratio and cure rate for a broad range of diseases which are presently untreatable or poorly managed. Now these nanoparticles are non-viral, they are silica based mm. and they contain information which directly affect the genes. Now they're talking about disease here, but we've seen videos in this series where we talked about them where they actually also can alter the genetics of your mind and even the genetics of your religious discernment mm. center. So that you, you wouldn't, if you were a fundamentalist, be able to believe what you believed before because they could suppress your genetic system. Yes. Now how far along the line are they in terms of interfering with your mind so that they can actually not only modify it, enhancement Enhance. they call it, mm -hmm. but actually regulate it. Mm -hmm. Now that's interesting. Correct. Now when we look at the conspiracy theories out there, we have to make a point, conspiracy theories. They're saying this vaccine could contain nanoparticles. This mm. is interesting, right? Yes. And that these nanoparticles would then sort of create a grid whereby they can actually control you via certain radiation, particularly 5G comes to mind, etc. That's the mindset up there. Now, mm -hmm. we're not going along with that. We're just saying that's the way it is. But the World Economic Forum webpage clearly indicates that they want to go in that direction. Yes. Human enhancement, control of human thinking, control of what you do, yes. how you do it, etc. Just to go a little bit further, here's the, the Neuralink project and this comes from Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory, an integrated brain-machine interface platform with thousands of channels. And this is of course Elon Musk mm -hmm. and his Neuralink technology that he's been talking about. This is fascinating stuff. Yes, very interesting. Here's an abstract from this article. Brain-machine interfaces hold promise for the restoration of sensory and motor function and the treatment of neurological disorders. Could it affect the way you think? But clinical BMIs have not yet been widely adopted in part because modest channel counts have limited their potential. In this white paper we describe Neuralink's first steps towards a scalable, high bandwidth BMI system. We have built arrays of small and flexible electrode threads with as many as 3072 electrodes per array distributed across 96 threads. We have also built a neurosurgical robot capable of inserting six threads, 192 electrodes per minute. And each thread can be individually inserted into the brain with micron precision for avoidance of surface vasculature and targeting specific brain regions. So they can target specific brain regions. Mm -hmm. Now of course they're, they're telling you that this is all for medicinal purposes, 
and this all sounds wonderful and people that are paraplegics will be able to walk, walk. people that are blind, blind where the optic nerve is damaged will be able to see because this technology will take over mm -hmm. but it goes further yes they're even saying that you will be able to communicate almost telepathically without mm -hmm. speaking now we conjectured in a previous one that the the world that is out there the angelic world used to be able to connect mind to mind so the the human being was also created with a tremendous capacity mm -hmm. which has somehow been curtailed as a consequence of sin and the devil knows this yes and he might be wanting to bring you back to where this technology overwhelms you and you think this is the greatest thing but at the same time he wants to control you mm -hmm. so let's just go into this a little bit further here's a video which shows us what these people are actually doing at the moment if someone ultimately does get a neural link installed what will take place well for version one of the device it would be um, it, it basically implanted in your skull it, it can interface basically anywhere in, anywhere in your brain um, so it could be something that uh, you know helps cure say uh, eyesight like give you returns your eyesight even if you've like lost your optic nerve type of thing uh, could, really could, yeah yeah absolutely hearing obviously um, I mean, pretty much anything that where that that it, it could, in principle, fix almost anything that is wrong with the brain. Uh, that's like a microcontroller, and uh, in, in near muscle groups, uh, you you could then create a sort of a neural shunt that restores somebody who is a quadriplegic to full functionality, like they can walk around, be normal. Whoa. Yeah. So maybe it, slightly better. Slightly better. But over time, yes. You're going to have to cut the whole top of someone's head off and put a new top sure. with a whole bunch of wires if you want to get, you know, the real turbocharged version, the P100D <laughs> of, of brain stimulation. I mean, ultimately, if you, if you want to go with full AI symbiosis, you'll probably want to do something like that. Symbiosis is a scary word when it comes to AI. It's optional. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. Yeah. It's just, I mean, once you enjoy the Dr. Manhattan lifestyle, once you, once you become a god, it seems very, very unlikely you're going to want to go back to being stupid again. I mean, you, you literally could fundamentally change the way human yeah. beings interface with each other. Yes. Yes. You wouldn't need to talk. Well, you, you'll be able to interface with each other in some sort of a non-verbal, mm -hmm. non-physical way where you will transfer data back and forth to each other without having to actually use your mouth yeah, and make noises. Yeah, exactly. So I, I've said is like that there could be potentially a universal language that's created through computers that particularly young kids would pick up very quickly. Yeah, I think you would, in principle, you would be able to communicate uh, very quickly and with far more precision uh, ideas. Uh, and, and language would, I'm not sure what would happen to language. But you, you could probably, in a situation like this, you would be able to just, it would be like, kind of like the Matrix. You, you want to speak a different language, no problem. Right. That's why it was downloaded the program. Whew. So you can download the program. What programs do they want to download into your mind? Now, God communicates with humanity through the frontal lobe. And anything that impacts the frontal lobe impacts your decision-making capacity. Don't you think the devil would like to have control over your frontal lobe? What has he been using to date to mm. get rid of the efficiency of your frontal lobe. Television. Television. Music. Drugs. Music. Stimulants. Caffeine. Mm -hmm. Any one of those 
cannabinoids, any one of those, anything to get your frontal lobe to be curtailed so that he can implant his way of thinking. And if that spirituality center could be affected, that would be the ultimate, that would cut out God, right? Yeah, like he mentioned. We you, just download the program. Or, and if you become like a god. You become like a demon, demon mm. god. Mm. So those, those centers that you used to have in the antediluvian world, that God had to curtail because of sin. Mm. Because if you could read somebody's mind, can you imagine the chaos that that would create and how it would increase sin mm -hmm. in this world? True. So God eliminated that capacity mm -hmm. so that uh, it would not create a worse situation than we already have. What about the antediluvian world? It must, they, that's probably one of the reasons why God had to get wipe Absolutely. out the earth. Absolutely. And after the fall, there was a genetic uh, switch. Mm -hmm. Certain things changed. Uh, the plants changed, the animals changed, their diets changed, and all of these issues. But let's continue because we are busy mm. with a very important thing. Yes. They are saying that they can change humanity. Here's a statement from the Spirit of Prophecy. It comes from letter 114 of 1903. Satan uses influence of mind on mind. Cast out of heaven, Satan set up his kingdom in this world and ever since he has been untiring, striving to seduce human beings from their allegiance to God. That's his aim. Mm -hmm. He uses the same power that he used in heaven, the influence of mind on mind. That would include things like suggestion. That would include things like hypnosis. He, he used these techniques. Now what if he can step it up? What if through nanoparticles he could step up the control over the human mind? Men become tempters of their fellow men. The strong corrupting sentiments of Satan are cherished and they exert a masterly compelling power. Under the influence of these sentiments, men bind up with one another in confederacies and trade unions and secret societies. There are at work in the world agencies that God will not much longer tolerate. Any secret society must have a secret agenda, yes. a buddy agenda, right? And if it is supposed to be universally effective, then that agenda must somehow be transferred to humanity. So this is the way he works. So stay away from any of such associations come out of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Now, I put this slide in because I just wanted to show that the Jesuit mindset is one mindset that has to be, according to their philosophy, transferred to all of humanity. Yes. And we discussed the Jesuit mindset in quite some detail. Mm. And we discussed this aspect that they have to control your thinking that you have to give up your individuality for the sake of the common good, good yes. that you have to give up your individual judgment to the hierarchy of the church. Mm -hmm. Because according to them, and particularly the Pope, has a much better understanding than you as an individual could ever have. So he will tell you what to believe, he will tell you what to believe and how to interpret the Bible according to his way and God is cut out of the equation. Do you think God likes that kind of philosophy? No, definitely not. Did God die for your freedom of choice? Absolutely. If God could have created us without a freedom of choice, then we would not have sinned. Correct. Then he would not have had to die. Yes. So if he had this mindset, then he would not have had to die. Yeah. 
and there would have been no sin in the world. No. But you would have been a robot. Yes. Would you like to be a robot? No. Would you like to have a thousand nanoparticles and wires in your head telling you what to do and how to react and what to believe? No. You wouldn't like that? No. Not at all. So who would you rather trust? God. God mm. or the devil? Would you rather trust God who demonstrated to all of humanity that he values your freedom of choice to the point of paying the ultimate price? I mean, it's a no-brainer Correct. as far as I'm concerned. Mm. That's dependent on your view of God. Because your view of God should be, he was loving to do that all for you. Yes. Does God have rules? Yes. Would God like you to obey his rules? Yes. Is he going to force you? No. <laughs> you can see in humanity that he certainly doesn't force them, right? No. But it, once they've made their choice, that they do not want to adhere to a set of logical love imbued laws. laws, then he says, well, then you, you can't be with me. So the association of Jesuit colleges and universities just tells us how many universities the Jesuits have in the United States alone. We're not even talking worldwide, right? 27 universities and all of these sentences for career enhancement and guidance and then of course after 50 years the thing the living spirit of Vatican II and how the Jesuit education is working in the world now this is just colleges mm. and universities and schools hundreds of schools of course and this mindset has to be this Vatican II mindset has to be transferred to mm -hmm. the whole of humanity now, who ran Vatican II? Who was behind it? The Jesuits. Yes. Who ran uh, the first Vatican Council, which was the Council of Trent? The Jesuits. The Jesuits. Yes. I mean, this is their mindset. And then they still boast, if you go to the Jesuit alumni in Congress, they'll tell you that the United Senate, ha State Senate has 12 alumni from the Jesuit universities and the House of Representatives 43. They're pretty interested in politics, right? Yes. And they're pretty adamant as to what the results should be and the movements should be about COVID. Mm -hmm. And their alumni, like Fawcy, uh, seem to be, you know, very in tune with their <laughs> agenda. Here's another statement from Manuscripts Release, number 8. God's presentation of the detestable works of the inhabitants of the ruling powers of the world who bind themselves in secret societies and confederacies, not honoring the law of God, should enable the people who have the light of truth to keep clear of all these evils. More and more will all false religionists of the world manifest their evil doings. For there are but two parties, those who keep the commandments of God and those who war against God's holy law. But there seem to be hundreds of parties out there. Yes. But there's only one that says the commandments of God. Mm -hmm. Not the commandments of Rome, the commandments of, of God. God. So if there are only two categories, then all those other categories must be one collective category, sitting yes. at one table. Yes. Fascinating. And God will not much longer tolerate this. And no. God will destroy the entire system. So whether the king of the north wins or whether the king of the south wins is irrelevant. Correct. They're going to be destroyed. Yes. Well, we do know that the king of the north is going to have the ascendancy. Mm -hmm. Now let's go back to the French era and the French Revolution and Revelation chapter 11. Who was ruling in France and in the entire Europe for that matter before the French Revolution? The Roman. The Roman Catholic yeah. Church, right? Under the Jesuits. And then they lost a lot of their power through Protestantism. Mm. And the Protestant nations were 
well, at least half of Germany, mm -hmm. the United Kingdom, the United States of America, and then the other spatterings around the world, Australia, New Zealand, Southern Africa, etc., etc. And somehow they had lost their power. And then they had to regain their power. So how about throwing all religion out, both Protestant and Catholic, and bring in secularism on a grand scale under a Jesuit plot, mm -hmm. pretend that Catholicism had a mortal wound. It seemed to have a mortal, mortal wound. wound yes. It doesn't seemed. say it had mm. a mortal wound. And then once the outplay of this philosophy has brought the world to the chaos that we have now, yes. bring back yes. the first system. Mm -hmm. Is that a possibility? Yes, well, that's how the plan should play out. Correct. Now, in the first instance, how did Rome control humanity so that the mindset of humanity would be absolutely in harmony with the mindset of Rome? It took away the Bible. Took away the Bible, number one. Secondly? Free choice. Free choice, they forced mm -hmm. you. And if you didn't believe like they believed, the stake, that's torture, the rack. Heretic. All right, now today we're saying, you know, that's barbaric. So we won't torture you to death. So the French Revolution used the guillotine and just chopped your head off, which was probably not their plan A, but uh, <laughs> became their plan B. And so God is going to destroy all of these systems. So that's important to know. Yes. So what is your only safety? God. God. That's your only safety. So here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. What does Revelation chapter 22 tell us who has access to the tree of life? Those that keep the commandments. Those that keep the commandments of God. Unless, of course, you have a modern translation, then you only have to wash your, wash your clothes. clothes. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't even say in the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. So let's stick to uh, one that says it as, it as it is. So God is going to destroy everything. That stone is going to strike. And the whole system will be taken away. Now, this is something I, I put in writing so that we could think about it. If you think this is a step forward for humanity, speaking about this human enhancement, and it does not rob you of your freedom of choice, then you have no understanding of the character of God who was prepared to die for your freedom of choice. Can we improve on God's creation? No. You know, just, in, just look at any issue. Look at the manipulation of food, for example. Mm -hmm. Genetic manipulation. Oh, we have such wonderful yields now. Yes. And uh, you know, everything is just perfect for packaging and distributing, but uh, the quality is yeah. just absolutely horrendous in many cases. Now just cast your mind back to the biblical times when those spies went into Israel, yes. went into the promised Canaan. land, and they came back. What did they bring back? Wonderful food. Wonderful food. And they brought back one bunch of grapes. Yeah. And how many people carried it? Two. Two people carried yes. it. So have we gone forward or have we gone backwards? <laughs> Definitely backwards. I haven't seen a, a, a bunch of grapes yet that two people have to carry. Yeah, well, I was on a farm uh, when I was younger, and there was a farm in the Cape. It was a, a wine farm. And there I saw a bunch of grapes, which was probably about this big. Okay. And it amazed me. It was just one huge bunch, one, one bunch of grapes. So today, that is virtually impossible. Mm -hmm. They're all about this size, if they're, if they're anything wonderful. So have we really gone forwards or have we gone backwards? I mean, we spoke about heirloom seeds and yeah. original things and those, those tomatoes that you get and that fruit that you get. 
Uh, I don't know. I don't think you can improve on anything that God made. There's big cabbages and everything is when it's natural. And yeah. You know. Sure, if things have gone wrong and sin has brought demise and disease into the world, you can improve upon these things. But your freedom of choice is what it's all about. Peace on earth by transforming humanity into zombies? Or peace on earth by accepting God's plan of obedience to his commandments by choice. Which one do you want? Which one of those two? I'll take the peace on earth accepting God's plan of obedience. Okay. Do you think humanity will by choice accept to obey God? As a whole? I doubt it. No. Right? So only those who actually accept it will be acceptable to God. Now there are many that are putting their hope, if you look at these conspiracy theories out there and the people that talk about them in particular, they're saying, this is a sign that the church is going to be raptured. Mm. There's no such thing in the Bible. There will only be a final separation of the wicked and the just and God's people will be taken and meet the Lord in the air, right at the end, after the plagues have fallen. So this is a false hope being given to the world out there. So is God evil if he destroys this system, or is he a loving God? That's my question. I think he's a loving God. Well, I would be incredibly grateful if God would prevent someone from controlling my mind. Mm -hmm. And if he wants to do it by force, or by whatever means, I would be very grateful if God intervenes. So Joshua 24 verse 15 says, And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose ye this day whom you will serve. That's very important, your freedom of choice. So I don't believe that God will permit humanity to go to that point where they control people. Mm -hmm. He might permit some that have already given themselves over to be controlled, but humanity as a, as a, a, as a whole, I have serious doubts. Let's get back to Revelation chapter 11, verse 12. We did the other ones in the previous chapter. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. I call this a loud cry. So, the Old and the New Testament, the Word of God, even though it was suppressed in the French Revolution in a literal sense, mm. and then in an antitypical sense in the whole of humanity, which we have been dealing with in this course, then they will be lifted up again and there will be a loud cry. Excuse me, mankind. Take a look at God's word. Make a choice. Either you fall under the system of coercion and human enhancement or the other. Yes. That's your choice. And at the same hour was there a great earthquake and a tenth part of the city and the, in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to God of heaven. That was typical at that stage in the French Revolution. Blood all over, beheading, of kings and queens and noblemen and a de destruction of the thinking people in an entire society. What a terrible situation occurred and it is equated with a earthquake. So this is a reference to when they literally banned the Bible and the French Revolution took place. But anti-typically, mm -hmm. we are going to find similar circumstances. In other words, there will be an earth-shattering, earth-quaking event, which emulates what happened in the French Revolution. 
and we've seen it. We've had the slides on the screen. But the good news is there will be a remnant that will see the things that are happening in the world and they will give glory to God. So there will come a separation. Those that choose God's way and those that go the way of humanity. And the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And then comes the seventh trumpet. This is the heading here. Mm. And the seventh angel sounded, and there was a great voice in heaven, saying, The kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God and their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God. So here is the final culmination. So what happened there in miniature, in a local capacity, will happen universally. We are in that phase right now. And then when probation closes, the trumpet will sound and what was a fractional slaying of men over here, referring to 7,000, which is the number of God, the number of completeness, the number that God permitted, there will be a universal destruction of the entire humanity. That's what it says. Yes. Verse 17 says, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned. So God has permitted these things to this point and when probation closes and the plagues fall, humanity is destroyed mm -hmm. in the final plague. When that hail falls and that mighty earthquake comes, all of humanity is destroyed and God's people will be taken away. Not before then, mm -hmm. as some of them say now. We'll go through it. They have to go through it. Remember that literal Israel was the type. They went through the plagues. Yep. Anti-typical Israel will go through the plagues and will be taken away. And all the promises in the Bible mm -hmm. apply to this time. A thousand will fall by your side. Ten thousand by your right hand. It'll not come yep. near you. And this is after the close of probation. After the close of probation. Before the close. It's a different we story. We will have turmoil. And what happens to the nations? They were angry. And thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldst give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldst destroy them which destroy the earth. So there will be a destruction, and there will be a redemption. You have to choose. Yes. And the temple of God, this is fascinating, mm -hmm. was opened in heaven. So you get a vision, humanity gets a vision of the temple in God, of God. And what do they see inside this temple? And there was seen in his temple the Ark of the Testament. That's the a commandments. Ten commandments. Mm -hmm. The law of God. Mm -hmm. You have replaced it with human rights under Jesuit philosophy. French Revolution philosophy, the whole world has adopted human rights as opposed to God's commandments, Jesuit philosophy, and now they see this is the standard of righteousness. Yes. And there was lightning and voices and thunderings and earthquake and that final plague of hail, total destruction. Mm -hmm. 50 kilograms in some measurements, others slightly less, depending what measure you take for a talent. But that is a huge destruction. With rapid steps we are approaching this period when Protestant churches shall unite with the secular power to sustain a false religion. For opposing which their ancestors endured the fiercest persecution, then will the papal Sabbath be enforced by the combined authority of church and state, there will be a national apostasy which will end only in national ruin. Now we've discussed national ruin, we've looked at uh, population reductions, that can only be national ruin. Just um, explain what is national apostasy. 
National apostasy is when the whole nation decides to follow the precepts of a power that is not biblical. That's national apostasy. Even if it looks biblical. Even if it looks good. So if Rome says, I have an authority and I have the law and not God, and you will listen to my authority and not God's authority, then they've thrown down the gauntlet. And humanity has to make a decision. With whose authority are they going to run? Mm -hmm. And that national apostasy will be the government of the country. Enforcing a religious precept that is not biblical. And then comes national rule. Now, let's have a look whether Donald Trump is saying that the churches should side with, with him and the government. I find this, this interplay at the moment between the King of the North philosophy and the King of the South philosophy very interesting. So let's just look at what he has to say. A lot of things shut down, including churches. Let's talk about that and the importance of reopening churches. I know you've talked about that. I think they should open the churches. It's up to the governors, but I think, and I'm recommending it, you open the churches. They'll spread. They'll be socially spread. They'll have masks and uh, they'll do what they have to do, you know, the hygiene and everything else that we know. It's a very simple list. But I think it's very unfair that they have — I saw Jim Jordan the other day talking about it very well — that they have uh, 50,000 people protesting, and they're standing on top of each other, practically, and yet you're not allowed to go to church, you don't go to schools. We want to open our churches, we want to open our schools. But they have to let the churches open. They, they want to put — I'm going to tell you, the, the Democrats want to put them out of business. They want to put the churches out of business. Mr. President, is there a way to deem churches as essential businesses? How well, can we do I, that? I am looking at that because I think it's enough already. You have some states, I think they have no they, — they never want them open. They don't want churches open. Look, the Democrats, frankly, uh, if you look at the radical left Democrats, which are radical left now, they've gone radical left, uh, whether you're talking about life or whether you're talking about almost anything, they're not liking it. They're not liking it. And if there was one message you wanted to say to our viewers, what would it be right now? Well, I think uh, anybody having to do with, frankly, religion, but certainly the Catholic Church, you have to be with President Trump. When it comes to pro-life, when it comes to all of the things, these people are going to take all of your rights away, including Second Amendment, because, you know, Catholics like their Second Amendment. So I saved the Second Amendment. I have — if I wasn't here, you wouldn't have a Second Amendment. And pro-life is your big thing. And you won't be on that side of the issue, I guarantee, if, uh, if the radical left. Because they're going to take over. They're going to push him around like he was nothing. Now, don't you find that fascinating? So he's the one who says the churches should open. And the churches should side with his philosophy, particularly the Roman Catholic Church. Because their philosophy is basically what he said his philosophy. Now, remember, he's also Jesuit trained. Mm -hmm. I find this very interesting. This is exactly what we see in the Bible, that the mark of the beast will be informed. Now, enforced. Enforced. Now, By a church-state sta yes. conglomerate. Now, let's say that, for argument's sake, this philosophy mm. is the one that will turn out to be the one wielding power then there is a, a tremendous likelihood that religious legislation would come into play again to prevent the chaos out there in the world. Isn't that correct? Mm -hmm. Here's an article, Trump campaign advisor Jenna Ellis, separation of church and state is a liberal lie. They definitely want church and state to come together. We don't have to read no. the argument. Uh, in detail, but the, the notion that the United States observes the separation of church and state is a lie, according to President Donald Trump's senior campaign legal advisor. They should be together. Now, let's think about this. Now, we've been talking so much about Sabbath. Why would it be the Sabbath? And people are saying that we are obsessed with the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Well, let's think about it. The Sabbath is God's mark of authority. Correct. And it says in Exodus 31, verse 13, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep. 
for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord that does sanctify you. It is the mark of his authority. And the Roman Catholic Church says that the Sunday is a mark of her ecclesiastical authority. So more than any other idea or commandment, the Sunday is linked to the authority of Rome and the Sabbath is linked to the authority of God. Yes. So when it comes to a choice whose authority is the one that I accept in my life, if the sign is the Sabbath or the Sunday, then the keeping of the one or the other determines where your allegiance lies. So to me, it's not a question of a day. People always say, oh, it's just a day. It's not a question of a day. It's a question of authority, which happens to be absolutely linked with the day. So if I want to show the world that I accept in my life the authority of God over that of anyone else, what do I have to do to display it to the world? Keep Sabbath. Yes. Can Satan attack any of the other commandments? Well, he has. He's made them all null and void. But the very last one that he is keeping in reserve is the Sabbath issue. And he has no choice but to attack the Sabbath. Why? You can explain because it's the authority of God. Oh, yeah. And if he wants to attack the authority of God, he can do all the other things. He can, he can send 10,000 musicians into a stadium singing, highway, we're on a highway to hell and we don't care. That doesn't attack the authority of God. It's linked to the Sabbath. So he has to attack the Sabbath. And he has to replace it with the mark of his authority. Yes. There is no choice. He doesn't have a choice on, on the Sabbath. No. If he wants to attack the authority, he has to attack the Sabbath. And that's going to be the issue. Whether people like it or not, that is the issue because it's linked mm -hmm. to the authority. So, we were told also that this links up with Revelation chapter 18. Yes. So we will not go into such detail because Revelation 11 is basically the type of this anti-typical event. That one gave a local application with a uh, greater application universally. And this one, Revelation chapter 18, will give the consequences. Mm -hmm. So let's just briefly go through it. We, we've dealt with it in so much detail. We don't have to go into uh, all the issues in the beginning here because we've had WhatsApps on all of this. Yes. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven. This is after the mark of the beast and Revelation 13. And then there is this message of tremendous glory going to the world. And he cried mightily with a strong voice. So this is a loud cry. Mm. Saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a habitation of devils and a hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So we've discussed Babylon, the conglomerate of churches under the leadership of Rome. We discussed the three parts of it, yes. that it was the dragon, the beast, yes. and the false, false prophet. prophet. We're not going to go into this detail. And that the, the foul spirit was a false holy spirit that permeated the systems. And then it tells us that all the nations drank of this false doctrine, doctrine yeah. this false wine of the wrath of her fornication, in other words, apostasy towards mm -hmm. God. And even the kings of the earth had committed fornication with her. So the kings of the earth are fraternizing with the Babylonian religious system yes. under the leadership of the papacy. Yep. And we just saw it. Yeah. We just saw it in a video. 
And the merchants of the earth waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Well, look at the merchants of the world, all the mega billionaires. Yeah. And whether they're playing the left fiddle or whether they're playing the right fiddle, whether their name is Gates or whether their name is Soros, it doesn't really matter, right? No. And there are so many conspiracy theories about this. This is their game. The fact of the matter is they have the economies in, the, in their hand. Can they shut it down overnight? Yes. They can shut the economies of the world down overnight? Mm -hmm. Do they have them in their hand then? Yes. Do they seem to particularly care that they've been shutting it down? No. Doesn't look as if they're too bothered, right? No. No. So some the of them individual... Are, and some of the... Uh, it says the merchants will wax rich. So some of these even got richer when the economies did shut down. Ah, we actually saw that, yeah. right? And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. If you're part of the system, you're going to receive the plagues. Mm -hmm. And this idea that the Protestant world will be raptured, that idea is going to rupture pretty soon. It's mm. not going to happen. It's not going to happen. For our sins have reached unto heaven. What is sin? The transgression of the law. Absolutely. And God has remembered our iniquity. So Revelation chapter 11, what was the standard that God showed at the end there? Commandments. The commandments of God. Reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her, double according to her works in the cup which she has filled, filled to her double. So retribution is coming. How much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she says in her heart, I sit as queen and am not a widow and shall not see sorrow. She believes that she has everything under control. She is the mother church. She is going to glorify herself. It's fascinating. They get away with everything. Yeah. And the bishops are saying, well, even if the priests confess that they have been pedophiles and that they've done this or that or the other, the system of the church does not permit us to, to tell others about it or bring them to justice. And they sit in all of this luxury wrapped in gold and all of these things. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine. All of those. We will see terrible things on this earth. Yes. We are living in a time of crisis. And she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. So she is a priestly prostitute because she's going to be burnt with fire. A normal prostitute just gets stoned, right? Yes. So we know this is a religious system that's going to be destroyed. And what will the kings of the earth do when they see that the religious system has let them down? How will they know? The plagues. Yes, absolutely. First of all, the cities went. There was turmoil, there was death everywhere, millions of people dying. And they're saying, we have to get back to God mm. and we'll keep the Sunday and we'll enforce the precepts of the church. And then the plagues fall. Mm. And they will realize that they've been deceived. And what will they say? The kings of the earth who've committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. The people will turn against these churches and against this Babylonian system and says, you, mm -hmm. you said that these people that were warning us and telling us to keep the commandments of God and not to keep the precepts of men were fanatics. Yeah, they were and now look at us, we're dying like flies. There's famine, destruction all around us and they will turn upon these false shepherds and just as you had in the Old Testament times when people, the enemies of God destroyed themselves, so they will destroy themselves. Standing afar off for the fear of a torment. So were they afar off in the beginning? No. no, they were in union. And now all of a sudden when they see the consequences, oh, but it's too late. Too late. It's too late. It's too late. Sort of like when Noah went into the ark yes. and the door was shut 
And then late. afterwards, when it started raining, a lot of people probably then also thought, if only, if only, if now, only. Yeah, if only. Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. Well, imagine if these multi-billionaires are suddenly paupers, right? Yep. They will weep, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. I think Google might go out of business. Yeah. Do you think so? And at that stage, it doesn't matter anymore, because there won't be evangelism when the plagues fall. No. There's no need because the probation is closed. The merchandise of gold and silver and nanoparticles and... Uh, uh, no, we mustn't add to the word. <laughs> silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, purple, sink, silk, scarlet, and all thine wood and all manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wooden of brass and iron and marble. Just talking about merchandise in mm -hmm. general and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and the fruit that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee. It's interesting that it talks about lust, mm -hmm. lusted after, this craving of humanity. And all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee and thou shalt find them no more at all. Total destruction yes. is coming. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. Does that speak about a total collapse of the, of the economy? Yes. Yes. The now, it's world. interesting that Deagle uh, portrayed a partial collapse. Yes. But here we have a total, total collapse. So is Deagle, or is that maybe referring to a little bit different time? It's a little time of trouble, and then comes the greater time of trouble. So we are now in the little time of trouble until probation closes. Mm -hmm. Then we go to total destruction. When the plagues begin to... So fall. Revelation 18 gives you a broader picture of the final destruction. Mm. And the only way to avoid it is come out of her, my people. And who are his people? Those that keep the commandments of God. God. And have the testimony of Jesus and the faith of Jesus and keep the commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life. How much plainer can God put it? I don't know. I don't know. And then also what I would like to add is that there's still hope up until the close of probation. Absolutely. After that, then this is what will happen. There's no, there's no more hope. Now, listen to verse 16. And saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen, purple, scarlet, decked with gold, precious stones and pearls. Which church has those as its particular colors? Roman Catholic The Roman does. Catholic Church. Reason. Mm. That's the, yeah, the, the age of reason, Goddess. Jesuit thinking. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company in ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. Total collapse of the world economy, not partial. Totally. And cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, what city is like unto this great city? It controlled the world. Mm -hmm. It controlled the monetary system. Didn't um, Nebuchadnezzar ask the same? He asked the same questions. And they control both sides. This is the terrible thing. Mm -hmm. They control both sides and they sit at one table and they plan this thesis, antithesis, synthesis back to obedience to the king of the north, sudden destruction. And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour she made desolate. How do you get to the top 
in merchandise and in trade. You have to be part of the system. Yes. Is it perhaps useful to be part of their secret societies? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Rejoice over her, thou, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. That's the other side of the coin. I will rejoice. A system that wants to rob you of your personal mm -hmm. choice. May God fulfill this promise. But may as many as possible heed the warning. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, that's the nations, mm. saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Total elimination. I do not want to be part of the ecumenical movement. No. Because you're part of Babylon. Yes. And the voice of the harper and the musician and the pipers and the trumpet, trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman whatsoever crafty shall be shall be found any more in thee. All those great cathedrals, all those masons, they're all going to be gone. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more in thee. This is interesting because the millstone in this scenario is the one that grinds wheat. Yeah. It's the one that feeds the people doctrine, mm -hmm. the bread of, of life. But this is a false bread. Mm -hmm. This false millstone will disappear because they have set aside the bread of life for saints and relics and systems which have no salvation in them. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee, for thy merchants were the great men of the earth. Mm. All those monuments with these great men of the earth and those that we honor with special days, I'm afraid they will not be in that list that is mentioned up there that will be rejoicing. Mm. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. This is direct demonic intervention. Yes. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. They were responsible for these things. Many of the wicked were greatly enraged as they suffered the effects of the plagues. This comes from early writings. It was a scene of fearful agony. Parents were bitterly reproaching their children and children their parents, brothers their sisters and sisters their brothers. Loud wailing cries were heard in every direction. It was you who kept me from receiving the truth which would have saved me from this awful hour. The people turned upon their ministers with bitter hate and reproached them, saying, You have not warned us. You told us that all the world was to be converted and cried, Peace, peace, to quiet every fear that was aroused. Perhaps we can add there, You told us that we would be raptured and not be part of this, but it won't happen. Mm -hmm. You have not told us of this hour. And those who warned us of it, you declared to be fanatics and evil men who would ruin us. But I saw that the ministers did not escape the wrath of God. Their suffering was tenfold greater than that of their people. I believe there are many in Babylon, many ministers in Babylon, who will see the light. Yes. I believe that many in Babylon will come out and heed that cry, Come out of her, my people. And this is an appeal mm. to all the ministers in all the denominations out there. Listen to the word of God. It's not complicated. Keep the commandments of God and hold to the faith of Jesus. The Protestant world today see in the little company keeping the Sabbath a Mordecai in the gate. You have to get rid of him. Mm. His character and conduct expressing reverence for the law of God are a constant rebuke to those who have cast off the fear of the Lord and are trampling upon his Sabbath. The unwelcome intruder must by some means be put out of the way. This is the aim of the devil. Yeah, that irritating little cult. That irritating little cult. 
When the power invested in kings is allied to goodness, it is because the one in responsibility is under the divine dictation. When power is allied with wickedness, it is allied to satanic agencies and will work to destroy those who are the Lord's property. It shouldn't be too difficult to discern whether a ruler is sticking to the word of God or whether he's working contrary to the word of God. The Protestant world have set up an idle Sabbath in the place of God's Sabbath should be. And they are treading in the footsteps of the papacy. For this reason I see the necessity of the people of God moving out of the cities into retired country places where they may cultivate the land and raise their own produce. Thus they may bring their children up simple, healthful habits. I see the necessity of making haste to get all things ready for the crisis. Mm. We are in the final moments of Earth's history. The Roman Church has not relinquished her claim to supremacy. We can see it. Yeah. When the world and the Protestant churches accept the Sabbath of her creating, while they reject the Bible Sabbath, they virtually admit this assumption. In so doing, they ignore the principle which separates them from Rome that the Bible and the Bible only is the religion of Protestants. As the movement for Sunday enforcement gains favor, it will eventually bring the whole Protestant world under the banner of Rome. And then the Protestant world will learn what the purposes of Rome really are. Control, control, control. That's it. Only when it is too late to escape the snare. She is silently growing into power. Not so silently anymore. Anymore, no. Her doctrines are exerting their influence in legislative halls and in churches. Did we see all those alumni mm -hmm. in Congress and in the Senate? And in the hearts of men, she is strengthening her forces to further her own ends. And when the time comes, she will strike. All that she desires is vantage ground. Whoever shall believe and obey the word of God will incur reproach and persecution. I want to end with this verse. 2 Corinthians 5.10 For you must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. My point with this verse is, all shall appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that it can be determined what he has done in his body as well as in his mind as to whether it is good or whether it is bad. Mm. That means God is going to hold everyone accountable can he hold someone accountable who is not capable of making a choice? No, he won't. Can't that? Mm -mm. All right. So if he cannot make a choice, and the World Economic Forum is telling us that they're going to modify people so that uh, they conform, mm. will God permit it? I, I cannot see that he will, no. I don't see God can permit it. Why not? Because God is going to hold everyone accountable for their choice. So if a system takes away your freedom of choice on a universal scale, God will have to stop it. Mm. Otherwise he cannot fulfill this promise. So I believe that the time has come when this world is going to come to an end. And people may shout, this is fear mongering or, or whatever. No, I believe it's just a reality. It's common sense. Mm. Humanity on every level, in terms of corruption, in terms of blatant apostasy, in terms of blatant, horrendous criminality, in every single level, spiritually, Satanism, mm. the world has reached the point of no return. Yes. It cannot be fixed. And I believe God is going to intervene. And may this series help people to make a choice. Make a choice. 
either we obey God, who died for our freedom of choice, or we obey the system and we become robots. May God help us with that choice. Shall we close with prayer? Please. Heavenly Father, all that has been prophesied has and is coming to pass. And what remains for humanity is to make a choice. And the choice is a simple choice. A choice between the authority of God and the authority of man. A, th a choice between freedom and a choice between slavery. Help us to make the correct choice in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. To subscribe, click here. When the bell appears, click again to get notifications. To watch the next video, click here. Thank you.